Kate Waller Barrett has long recognized that involving families and the community contributes to children's academic success. Since its inception in 1996, Project Interaction has sought to engage parents, teachers, students, and community groups in ways that are linked to student learning. Project Interaction works in several fronts. Building a welcoming, respectful, and inclusive learning community that values diversity, affirms student cultures, and builds cultural competence is important to the Barrett community where diversity is seen and used as an asset for enhancing student learning. It has also sought to empower immigrant families to be advocates for their children and develop their leadership skills. Project Interaction has initiated many activities that help parents support their children's learning, both at home and at school. Its Participa workshop series provides an opportunity for immigrant families to learn to navigate the school system, understand their rights and responsibilities, and ask effective questions about their children's education. A popular program across all segments of the school community is Family Library Nights, a special nights for storytelling that bring together families and teachers. Roving Readers, conceived by Teaching for Change, has allowed parents, grandparents, and community members to come into the classroom as readers and storytellers. Sharing their favorite stories, Robin Readers help children develop positive self-esteem and reject common stereotypes by understanding the experience of other people. One special tradition that affirms our students' cultures and contributes to building a welcoming, respectful, and inclusive learning community is the UN Day and Heritage Assembly. Knowing your roots and honoring your ancestors gives you a greater appreciation for the backgrounds of those around you. The Assembly program celebrates our community's diversity with a heritage parade and with the sharing of songs and stories. Project Interaction TV Studio has produced several videos featuring children and teachers that use the power of the story to increase appreciation and awareness about diversity and different racial and cultural experiences. Here is one of those stories. In 1961, I was in Memphis, Tennessee for a visit with my maternal grandparents, Morton and Inez Tendler. I was four and my younger brother Chris, who was two, usually spent some of our summers here so that my parents could vacation without us. This was fine with me since I loved the dank, sweltering heat of the south by the Mississippi in the summer in the company of my grandparents. My grandfather was the head of surgery at the First Baptist Hospital and was a legend, a hero in this city. Everywhere my brother and I went, we were recognized as Morton Tendler's grandsons, and the ice cream, candy, or cookies that came with that recognition were too good to be true. On top of all this, on this visit, my grandfather had two tickets for him and me to go to a Memphis Chicks baseball game. They were a minor league team that belonged to the Cincinnati Reds, and it was to be my first real baseball game. But on the day of the game, my grandfather got a call from the hospital and he had to go in to perform an operation on a policeman who had been shot during a robbery attempt. He told me not to worry because Walter would take me to the game. Walter Robinson was my grandparents' gardener. He was older than dirt, as the southern expression went. He cut my grandparents' grass, raked their leaves, built bird feeders, dug out their pond, and anything else that required doing five days a week. I felt like I'd known him for as long as I'd known my grandparents, and while disappointed that my grandfather was not going, I was happy to go with Walter. We got to Garber Stadium at around 12.30 for the 1 o'clock start. Before walking through the turnstiles, I could already taste the hot dogs, boiled peanuts, and Coca-Colas that I was about to consume in mammoth proportions. 
However, when Walter handed the tickets to the man at the turnstile, he looked us over and said, Sorry, boy, these seats are for whites only. I was shocked and couldn't control the tears escaping from my eyes. Walter knelt quickly in front of me and in a kind but very stern voice said, Stevie, don't you be crying. Your grandpa wouldn't want none of that at this time. Come on, we'll go sit in the colored section with the real baseball fans. I wiped my eyes and reached for his soft, wrinkled, and powerful hand, and he led this little Jewish child into the promised land of the right field bleachers, the colored section. I don't remember much about the game, and it wasn't until a dec decade or so later that I realized what Walter had been a victim of, and by then he was dead, and I couldn't tell him I was sorry. <laughs>